everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Tony Braswell, the founder and president at Gale Healthcare. Tony, how are you today? Hey, Jared. Great to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for letting us come on. Absolutely. I'm excited for, for us to chat. Uh, let's dive right into it. If you could tell the audience a little bit about your background, I'm sure they'd love to, to start off with that. It's been a crazy road. Um, I make it short and sweet, but I moved to Tampa in, in 1986 right out of college with a background in computer science and started writing code. And I actually wrote code for about five years and designed computer systems and I had a good time doing that. And I woke up at 26 years old with cancer and realized that I didn't want to code anymore. And once you have something like that, you realize that your lives have changed. And I was blessed to have it at such a young age. And um, so I got into the healthcare staffing business in, in March of 1991, and I've been in it ever since. And um, really, it's, it's, it's a you talk about a dopamine rush, you know, making filling shifts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, nurses are great to work with, and I've been doing it um, since October 1st of 1991. So 31 years I've been doing this. Yeah, the the things that you've seen in this space, the innovation, the innovation that you've uh, you know, that has come from your organization too. That's, that's, uh, not many people can say that. No, it's crazy. You know, I tell people when we first started in 91, innovation was a roll of quarters. You had to have a roll of quarters every time you left the house because you had to find the nearest pay phone to be able to do what we did. And now we have apps doing it. It's crazy. And, you know, and our apps have been no different than the, the transition from quarters to cell phones um to email to pagers you know pagers was a big deal in our industry and you could page people and then you could page them and put 411 or 911 and things like that and then we went to email then we went to voicemail and now we have apps so it's, this has been a steady progression and our app technology we're doing today that we've done for six and a half years this isn't the end this is the beginning of what's next and we're always working on what's next because it's no different than a, a roll of quarters or an answer machine it's just the next progression of communication well, I'd love to switch if you could talk talk us through uh, an overview of Gale Healthcare. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are yep. already familiar with Gale. The, you've won a ton of awards, right? You yeah. personally in the company, We're but we'd excited. love to hear more. So Gale is real simple for the person, um, the average layman. Gale is, and I hate to say it because everybody says it, but it's just so easy. It's Uber for nurses. Um, nurses, uh, SIA, which is the staffing industry, report came out yesterday and they said that 60 million Americans have worked in a gig, 60 million. And that accounts for $1.5 trillion of um, US GDP. Well, that report came out last year and it was 33 million Americans. So in the last 12 months, we went from 33 million Americans working in a gig um, to 60 million Americans working in a gig. Um, and that's what we are. We're allowing nurses to work when they want to work, where they want to work, and get paid within moments of getting off work. It's not daily pay that they get paid today. They get paid. We pay thousands of people under eight minutes. Um, I can pay you in 1.42 seconds for getting off work, and it takes me eight minutes on average to pay you in 1.42 seconds. And that's what we're, we're doing. And if you also look at the facilities, healthcare facilities, the gig economy, it's just not a nurse. And see, the problem is, Jared, nurses are quitting I can't even explain how fast it is. it is a crisis. The nurse doesn't want to quit being a nurse. She just can't work because it is, I mean, it is trauma after what we've gone through the pandemic nationwide. It is trauma. I can't describe any other word, but she still wants to work as a nurse. She just can't work Monday through Friday, 3 to 11, but she'll still work as a nurse. And while my technology allows her to do is work when she wants to work, where she wants to work and get paid same day. I've been doing daily pay and it's not daily pay, it's instant pay since 1999 we started with checks now it's electronically i didn't do it i'd like to tell you i was so smart i came up with that well we'll do this i did it because my nurses need it that the average nurse is a single mom 44 with two kids she doesn't want daily pay who does she needs daily pay i had a nurse come into my office um this week actually i'll tell you a quick story because gail created a foundation and we put a half a million dollars in this foundation to help nurses. And we started out giving away scholarships and we realized, you know what? We really don't need to help scholarships because we're turning away 91,000 nurses students year. So what we really need to focus on is the nurse that works full time, that works, that's homeless, that lives in her car, that lives in a hotel at hundred dollars a day. And we realized that for a couple thousand dollars, we could get that in a new apartment. And we just did one this week. And that nurse that she was coming up here to thank me personally, but she didn't need to do, and I really didn't want her to, but she did. She runs out of gas coming up here. 
She didn't run out of gas because she didn't stop at a gas station. She ran out of gas because she didn't have any money to buy more gas. But think about that. That nurse getting paid next Friday doesn't help her. So that's why we built the technology so that anybody can work when they want to work, where they want to work, and get paid. When they, That's the future of all this. You know, we are so used to, in the economy we live in, with Amazon and Instagram and this, Insta that, and Insta that, and download this. But we're going to get paid in two weeks. It's, it's, there's, other than we just want to be stubborn about it. But that's the future of all this, the gig economy. And as everybody says, you know, the recession's coming, and I think we're already in one. More people are going to need access to daily pay, instant pay, not less. So that's what we're doing. Um, we've got 56,000 nurses in 40 states using it today. My plan is to add 200,000 more nurses in the next 24 months. We know how to do it. We've built the technology to do it. And um, now we just got to get through every day and add more nurses every single day. It's, it's insane what we're doing, quite frankly. Congratula uh, congratulations on everything, too. Um, it's, the daily pay is so interesting, too, because I'm sure – uh, it's just it's gotten more sophisticated over time. It must have been tough in the early days, like great thing to offer, but tough. Well, let me tell you what happened. We had Fax.com reach out to us and said, we're canceling your account because we broke them. We broke Fax.com because we had nurses faxing us our time cards. And it wasn't all day. It was always at 3 o'clock, at 11 o'clock at night, and 7 o'clock in the morning. We would So we broke Fax.com. And they reached out to us and said, hey, guys, we love what you're doing, but, yeah, don't use our technology anymore. So we said, okay, we got we're we were in trouble because we didn't know how to do it. So we actually had to build technology, which we needed to do anyway. Um, when you're in 40 states, it's different if you know the nurse, you know you booked her, but we you know, you you've got people working you really don't know anymore like we used to. So we have to track it differently so we can pay it differently. And it forced us to go in and build better technology to actually do it because the key is not to pay 3,000 people a day. The key is to pay 30,000 people a day or 50,000 or 100,000. And that's what we've built today that we can actually do that. So it's been fun, you know. There's there's not many people that can say they broke. Facts.com, uh, ain't that crazy? Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, ain't that crazy? We broke. <laughs> uh, but in, in a good way, right? Because oh, yeah. it, it and, and it opened up um, some different paths for you to, to, you know, to continue innovating. And that's what I think most innovations are. That's how this whole thing came about. Before I built this technology, I was calling people one at a time. And we were a one and a half million dollar company calling people one at a time, begging nurses to go to work. And my son actually, um, I got an email, which I never get emails like this. And I opened it up. This is in 2016. And it was an email from Amazon, which I never got. And I probably got three or four today already. But I, so I looked at it and my son, a freshman in college, had bought a bottle of ketchup. And I called him up. I go, did you just buy a bottle of ketchup? Not a case, one bottle of ketchup. I'm like, what are you doing, son? He goes, well, dad, yeah, I need a ketchup. I said, have you lost your mind? How much is that going to cost? He goes, dad, you don't understand. It's free. I said, Logan, they're not coming to your dorm room free. You, you've you lost your mind. You're getting scammed, son. He goes, it's Amazon Prime. I'm like, "You, oh, my God, this kid. And I stand up and I look at the other guy in the company, and he goes, well, that was fun. I go, well, what? He goes, I just spent 45 minutes to get two nurses. We were calling nurses one at a time. And I looked at the phone, and I looked at him, and I said, we're doing this wrong. And I go to my men's group at my church every Wednesday, and I still do. And I went the next morning, I told that story, and one of the guys was an IT guy. He looked at me and goes, we can automate that. And we did. And here we are now, six and a half years later, with 250,000 nurses on a platform. We've hired and worked 56,000 of them. And um, it's, it's insane. what you know. But it was that problem that we had to overcome like breaking facts.com until we had the problem we wouldn't know how to overcome it or solve it and you know we think about it every day jared we have driverless cars we're talking about driverless 18 wheelers we talk about amazon prime we talk about instagram and Vimbos and stuff like that and the technology is getting faster towards these type of solutions not going back and what i've got to do is convince the facilities that look what you've done up to here is not going to work monday and they're thinking, it's, okay, we just, it's, we've not done it right. And they have done it right, but now they're not going to do it. Going, we've got to change the whole paradigm. See, what we did through the grace of God was we transformed an industry that I'd been in for 30 years. And when you transform something, a lot of times, most of the time, you'll use technology to transform that. Look at farming. Look at medicine. You'll use, just because you add technology to something doesn't mean you're going to transform it. We've transformed this gig economy and that's what we're working on every day so and we use technology to do that so it's kind of crazy what what were some of the let's let's go back to the early days too because what was the point where 
things really started to scale for, for Gale Healthcare? Well, let me tell you, um, it was, it's been challenging. The hardest thing is just convince the human behavior of things. Well, this is how I do it. Like right now, well, we get paid every two years. It's just how we do it. And the question is really simple is why? That's it. Why? Why do you do it that way? Why do you do it? And most people just don't ask why. They just accept it. Well, that's how we do it. Why? And when you start asking why, a lot of times there is no reason for it. It's just the way they've always done it. The people did it before you came on board and the people did it before that. And they've actually done experiments with that with monkeys and stuff. And then they would lecture shock and stuff like that. And people just fall in patterns without knowing what even reason why. Um, the hardest thing we had to overcome was to convince you to look differently, to look at the problem. And there's got to be a different way of solving that. And that's what people are doing around us all day with, you know, it's around us delivering packages with drones. I've seen it actually happen a drone delivering package i've seen it here in tampa what he goes to show that my grandfather he, he would not even understand that well what's coming next and that's what we're doing with the gig economy I mean, the, the generations have changed my dad had the same job 40 years didn't even think about changing jobs he was just grateful for his job the gig economy in one year went from 33 million americans to 60 million americans um what's going to be next year 90 million americans um, the gig economy, the pandemic showed people they could work remotely when they want to work, where they want to work. That's not going to go back. You know, we just moved into a new office over here in Tampa. The hardest thing we've done since building this app is trying to get people to come back to the office. That's the hardest challenge we're trying to overcome because they've been home for three and a half years and they're thinking, well, this is how we do it now. And it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, well, I'm in the office. So, um, it's, it's fun every day. Let me just tell you, we have fun every day. I'm with you too. I, I like being in the office. Uh, I'm home today. Um, it's just a different, I, I always liked it. I, I thought there's a different energy when you're all it's together. Sure is. You know, a different energy. And, and I could send someone a message or an email, or I could walk to the desk next to me and like really get into it. See, fa you know, body language, use my hands, right? That's been the hardest part about these video chats. It's like, I can be using my hands right now when I'm talking to you and getting right. all excited and you can't even see me, you know? Um, but it, really, really interesting what you've, what you've built so far. Uh, can you, can you tell us a little bit, uh, Tony, about what's next, uh, for, for the company? Well, a lot actually. Um, well, it's, it's getting the daily pay, and I keep saying daily pay, and it's not. It's getting instant pay in Main Street America. Well, go back to the in healthcare alone. The healthcare facilities they don't just need healthcare workers; they also need laundry workers and housekeeping and dietary and um, all those type of um, people. We're, we've got another app we built called Springboard that does all the non medical people as well. It's going back to those same facilities and saying, "Listen, we can help you recruit more people." We can help you. We can give you the technology and allow you to offer daily pay for your staff. Um, because, you know, by giving somebody two weeks vacation, that's not even a benefit anymore. It's kind of expected now. So it's like, well, your employer, that employer, stop, keep trying to find a nurse seven or three. God bless you for doing that. But don't turn away the nurse that'll work every Wednesday. Because then maybe you'll, she'll work every Wednesday and then she'll get excited and work every Tuesday and Wednesday, and then maybe you'll create a wonderful place and she'll work every day for you, but don't turn her away because she only only works on Wednesdays. And we can give you technology to pay her daily. I had one hospital group that came to us and they said, look, we own 14 hospitals in one market, 14 hospitals. The problem is all 14 of those hospitals are different independent companies. So if you're a nurse at one hospital, you can't go work at the next hospital. Well, why don't we put Gail in the middle contract with Gail to license all of those hospitals so that nurse can go to any of the hospitals she needs to. And we're like, I can do that literally in an hour from now and pay her instantly when you get off work. That was 13 months ago and they're still trying to figure out how to do that. Well, okay, got it, guys. But we've got to stop talking and start getting in action and getting people to work because in healthcare, unlike delivering flowers, if we don't deliver healthcare, someone could die. If you get your flowers the day after Valentine's, yeah, your girlfriend's mad, but she still gets flowers. But in healthcare, we can't deliver those flowers tomorrow. We got to get that delivery today, 311. And to stop looking at the same problem, thinking it's going to get a different result tomorrow. That's actually called a fool, looking at the same problem. You got to look up and go, okay, let's try something different. We did six and a half years ago. We built a machine here that's just not stopping. And we're going to have a lot more opportunity in the next six years than we had in the last six years because it's becoming more of an educated marketplace. 
people are understanding apps. When I first started six years ago, I remember nurses going, what's an app? You know, because the whole, it was just like, well, what's an app? Well, now they've got apps for everything. So of course you have apps for this gig economy. Tony, I'm so thankful that we were able to have you on the podcast and to, to have you, we'll have to, to meet up at some point since you're probably the closest guest that uh, we've had uh, since uh, you're in Tampa. Uh, really excited for you and, and what the future holds for Gale Healthcare and can't wait to have you on again soon. Jared, anytime, anytime I can talk about Gail, I appreciate the opportunity and thank you so much.